So we will just go over what we did yesterday. So this is Bhagavad Gita chapter 2. We are done up to verse 53. Now in this Sri Krishna has again underlined what it means is realization. Realization of God is overcoming whatever is happening in your mind. Alright? So it means when you are able to Restrain your mind, come to an equipoise and stay in the equanimity of mind, a person gets realization, a God realization. So this question is going to be asked by Arjuna now to Sri Krishna. So we will see what he is going to ask. So we are doing Bhagavad Gita chapter 2. Verse 54, Arjuna said, Krishna, what are the characteristics of a God-realized soul? Stable of mind and established in Samadhi, which is perfect tranquility of mind. How does the mind, man of stable mind speak? How does he sit? How does he walk? I think this is a question most of the people will have because it is very important to understand who is this God realized soul, what does he look like, what are his characteristics and how does he react in the world because everybody who is there in the world needs to react, needs to come to some kind of a Understanding needs to be responsible for some things and give proper answers. So if something goes in the eye of a person, his job is to ensure that his eyes are not hurt. So he has to remove whatever that little thing that is gone inside. Right? In the same way, if a person is affected by somebody's bad words, then that individual is supposed to extricate himself from that place. Which means remove himself from that place or ensure that he doesn't feel the barbs. The idea is what kind of a person is this? So Arjuna has asked what are the characteristics of a God realized soul? And then he adds stable of mind and established in Samadhi. Now, Arjuna understands very clearly that a God-realized soul is stable of mind and also he is in a state of Samadhi which is translated as perfect tranquility of the mind. Right? Now, what what does that mean? An individual who doesn't sway, who doesn't get disturbed by whatever disturbances that are around him, an individual whose mind is steady as a rock, he is not disturbed by anything around him. That state is called Samadhi. Now, if this translation is done by a religious person, immediately the answer is going to be a sadhu, a sage or a saint who is sitting steadily in a place without batting his eyelids, is lost in complete self, doesn't interact with the world. This is a wrong interpretation. The right interpretation is a person who is not disturbed in the mind doesn't need to react violently 
or even for that matter even in a very small manner getting upset or angry or disturbed this individual need not feel elated when he is praised recently when there was a video put up of some great political leaders who were praised by some of their stalwarts around this political leader was literally glowing and you know <clears throat> he was doing all kinds of things it clearly shows that it has affected him see please remember this an individual who is self realized need not react his job is to be tranquil he should not be feeling mighty pleased or upset especially he should not fall into the trap of anger and then create some kind of a ruckus he is not supposed to do that <laughs> so this god realized soul is stable of mind in this sentence also shri krishna is telling us through the mouth of arjuna that even the highest of the realized souls have a mind so don't be under this misinterpretation that there is no mind the idea about no mind also has to be understood very objectively how does that work when an individual says no mind status it means he has been able to decimate the mind the mind is still there it is enclosed but it's not reacting it is stored in the refrigerator a cool place not to be used when something happens here i will give you a very important sentence the things which happen to us without our interference and they come about by the will of god very easily are god's way of doing things in our life but if we force ourselves and get and insist on doing certain things then that is your mind at play so when your mind is at play you are nowhere near realization so now arjuna is asking how does this person sit talk do all kinds of material worldly jobs so now let us understand from sri krishna what is there we are doing bhagavad gita chapter 2 verse 55 shri bhagwan said arjuna when one thoroughly casts off all cravings of the mind and is satisfied in the self through the joy of the self self then he is called stable of mind Sri Krishna is explaining when one thoroughly casts off cravings of the mind. Do you know mind has all kinds of cravings, which are basically called desires. I want to know. Most important desire. I want to know. What do you mean by I want to know? The reason why this ha- happens is because it is called ignorance. every time when a says person says i want to know that means his knowledge is lesser now look at a person who is enlightened he is never going to say i want to know 
Because he knows. It's a simple answer. When a person knows, why would he want more answers? Now let us take an average human being. Suppose you see someone wearing some nice clothes. Your immediate reaction is, where did you buy? What is the cost of it? Is it imported? Or is it made over here? And the immediate question is, is it made in China? <laughs> so, these are the questions which immediately arise in the minds of a person. Similarly, if you go out and you see someone is having a small dog which looks very strange. Now, you might not have seen this kind of a dog in India. Your immediate question is, what is this dog? Where did you get him from? Is he a pure breed? Is there anybody who is selling these dogs? I mean, this is basically how the world goes, isn't it? So your curiosity is aroused. You want to know. There is no peace in the mind. In India today, something strange has happened. We had a 2000 rupee note. The government of India has said, you have to finish off these notes, give them away to the bank. No longer is it going to be a valid note. After some time. Maybe at the end of this year or something like that. They have said, return the note to the bank before this September. That has caused a lot of issues here. People should have gone to the bank to deposit the note. But they have not done that. On the contrary, something strange has happened. People have gone to stores which are selling items which are very, very expensive. So that they can palm off the note to that person. So they have gone and bought gold jewelry. They have bought cell phones. They have bought you know, different kinds of televisions. People have gone and spent money because they had this 2000 rupee note. Now, this itself caused so much of upheaval in the mind of a person. Imagine having even a single note. Do you know how much of a problem you are going to have? How am I going to give it to the bank? What are they going to say? Will they take down my name? <laughs> As if you are doing some great crime. But mind is a cauldron of all kinds of, you know, things going on. It is literally telling you, you got to do something. <laughs> And this is the place where the mind reacts violently. It wants to come up with answers. And these answers are, first they raise the question, what am I supposed to do? What will happen? How are things going to be? You know, this what, when, where, why, how, these questions are always there on top of the mind. <laughs> and that is what Sri Krishna is telling that one thoroughly casts off the cravings of the mind. The desire to do something has to be given up. The desire for knowing too much. You know the kind of talk that happens when there are friends around? They can take one single topic and talk for the next three hours or four hours at a time. Now imagine there is a match going on. There is a match going on on television and everybody is watching. And the person scores a goal. Okay? Or he is putting it in the basket. Now, here the problem happens that if it is called a foul 
or if there is something wrong with it do you know the amount of words that will flow from everybody's mouth somebody will be for it somebody will be against it cricket is a game like that so in india everybody is glued to the television because of this game of cricket so we have something which is called scoring four runs six runs and all that and then there is out so every time something happens there is so much of talk so many things are going on in the mind so that is why krishna is saying to arjuna the mind should not have any desires it should be tranquil so one thoroughly casts off all cravings of the mind so casting of cravings of the mind should be there which means you should not be disturbed if you are sitting for lunch and if you are not served something which is very very delicious or tasty but your neighbor is served immediately your mind goes out saying what happened why didn't you give me or as children you have seen when the children are sitting at the breakfast table and one child is served more than the other immediately the reaction is why is he getting more than me the reaction is there likewise any place that you go to the mind is constantly reacting this reaction should not happen so a realized being doesn't have any desires all the desires have been fulfilled he doesn't want anything there is no interaction happening in the mind when anything happens in front of him so that person is a realized person he is lost in the self we have done in the previous lessons what is the self so the self is everything you are not the body we have done this before you are the self that also we had done so if you are lost in the self would you care for the body absolutely not so you are not going to be disturbed in the body if something is happening around the body it is when you take ownership of the body that everything around you is disturbing you when you are lost in the self there is nothing which disturbs you so the enlightened person doesn't have any desires and is constantly lost in the self he doesn't interact or react with anything around him it is not apathy people immediately think that oh he is not reacting so he is apathetic towards it no he can see the actions happening and yet there is nothing happening in his mind there is no transaction happening this can be explained in a very beautiful manner the eye will see the ear will hear the nose will smell the mouth will taste the skin will touch and yet the in between space which is called the third layer you remember the first second third layer isn't it which is called first one is food body right which is called the gross body also second one is the breath and the third one is called the mind the fourth one is the intellect and the last one is the happy so 
in between this two on this side and two on this side, the one in the middle is called the mind body. If the mind body is like a vacuum, then whatever happens outside doesn't enter inside. Got it? So there is no reaction if anything happens and the eye is seeing it. So if the eye sees something, yet there is no reaction because the, 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 the mind body has been decimated. The sheath in between is the mind. That itself is decimated. It doesn't interact. So there is a vacuum in between. This is what you got to do. For getting enlightenment, you do not need to interact with anything that happens outside. Here I will give you a small rider. If your eye is seeing something or something falls into your eye, don't say I am not going to react to it. So if your finger is cut, don't say that I am, there is no mind, so nothing is going to happen to it. No, it's going to bleed, of course, and your eye is going to hurt. <laughs> so what do you have to do? Immediately remove whatever that is there in the eye. Go and bandage your finger, right? So you will say, how can you say then the mind is not reacting? See, I have, it's a rhetorical question. So please understand, I have to ask this question myself for you to know. Do you remember, we have five senses and five organs of action. Those are external, they are not internal. The hand which is going to remove something from your eye is external. It is connected to the food body. You are going to tie a bandage. That is also external. It is nothing to do with mind. It is a reaction which happens instantly. Do you want to know how this happens? Stand in front of someone and just do like this to that person and see what happens. <laughs> There is an instantaneous reaction. The instantaneous reaction is, don't do anything to me. Now I'm asking you, did the mind interact over there? No. It is not the mind. It is the instinct that reacts. Remember, instincts are there with animals also. Mind is not there. Instincts are there. So whatever happened, happened to the body. The body immediately interacted. So it is instantaneous. No reaction from the mind means that happened on its own. Did you get it? Mind is not coming in play. So that is the reason why if there is a reaction that is to happen, if it happens on its own, because of instinct or whatever other reasons, that reaction is not counted as karmic action. No mind happens instantly. Remember that. So, he is then called stable of mind. So this person who doesn't interact is called stable of mind. So we move to the next verse then. We are doing chapter 2 Bhagavad Gita verse 56. The sage whose mind remains, remains unperturbed Amid sorrow, whose thirst for pleasure has altogether disappeared and who is free from passion, fear and anger is called stable of mind. 
So, Sri Krishna is very clearly saying, who is a sage? A sage is a person whose mind is unperturbed, which means he is not disturbed with anything. That person is a sage. Does a sage need to have long hairs, wear, you know, have a big beard, wear orange color clothes and have some, you know, something over here? You know? No, there is no need. A sage can be a corporate czar also. So a sage can be anywhere. Only thing which he is supposed to do is he should not be disturbed with anything, unperturbed. He is not at all reacting to anything amid sorrow. So if there is something which is gone bad, if there is some sorrow in the life of a person, somebody is dead, somebody has hurt himself, this person should not be upset. So, everybody dies. So, what is the big deal? Everybody gets hurt. Someone has some diseases, somebody has some problems. So, what is the big deal? Why are you getting so upset? So, if you want to be a sage, don't get so much carried away by what happens around you. So become unperturbed. If somebody says something to you also, you don't need to react to that person. Just listen to it carefully. Do what is necessary and keep quiet about it. That is a sage whose thirst for pleasure has altogether disappeared. So there is no thirst for any pleasure whatsoever. There are different kinds of pleasures. The pleasures which are connected to the mind are different than the pleasures connected to the body. I am sure you know that. You know the pleasure connected to the ear. Listening to good music. Right? Listening to your own praises. Good music. Yes, of course. Somebody is praising you sounds like very good music. <laughs> so, this is what we got to do. Don't react. Even if you are listening to the music, even if somebody is praising you, you don't have to show your smile over there. Just listen to it. You got to have a tranquil face. There is no need of showing, oh, wow, this is so good. Now, those who have gone for all these music shows, have you seen the crowd over there? You see, everybody is jumping up and down. And the person comes on the stage also, they will start jumping and calling out and whistling and doing all kinds of things. And when the person starts with the first note itself, you know, just... The guitar getting played, everybody goes, yeah, <laughs> like that. What is this reaction? Now imagine a sage is standing over there. He will just be standing over there doing nothing. <laughs> so, it doesn't react. He doesn't do anything. So, the person is unperturbed. So, anybody who is having thirst for pleasure is distracted. Pleasure or pain, you know, whatever it might be, a person is distracted the moment something happens. The moment there is a problem, this problem creates the disturbance in the mind. What is the disturbance there? Oh, something has happened. I got to go and see. If there is an accident which has happened on the road, alright, there is a pile up or there is something, somebody is lying on the road. How many people will stop their car and have a look at it? Many. They will stop the car at the side, they will go to that place and just look at it and say, Oh my God, somebody should take him to the hospital. Okay. 
<laughs> so you interact over there your mind says oh look at this blood that is flowing oh who has done this thing blah 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 and some people just go away why do they go away because they don't want to be involved in that accident <laughs> but uh, if a sage is there if his mind doesn't react to it it doesn't really matter whatever has to be has to be he may just go away if it is required or he may just stand over there or he may take that person to the hospital it really doesn't affect that person his interaction is going to be minimalistic not too much of how oh, i did it kind of so this person is free from passion fear and anger is called stable of mind so this individual there is no passion see in our world of the material world the word which is used is you got to be passionate about something so if you want to reach some destination in your life you got to be passionate with it you got to have passion for art you got to have passion for going somewhere in life you want to be very passionate about reaching some destination whereas this individual is not passionate at all he is dispassionate the idea is even if the person is dispassionate yet he is going to put 100% effort in it Here, Sri Krishna is nowhere saying you are not supposed to put effort in it. He is saying efforts are required. So don't be under the impression that there are no efforts. Efforts are needed, of course. Hard work is required, right? So putting in hard work, putting in efforts, is primary responsibility of that person. Yet not being passionate about it. You have to do it dispassionately. so doing things dispassionately it's also very important then he says about anger why should a person get angry for what what is the reason for getting angry anger comes because unfulfilled desires we are going to do that verse now in the future when you have unfulfilled desires you are going to be angry don't be angry so this pers- particular person who is enlightened sage is never angry he may show anger but he is not angry so what happens is you know he can raise his eyebrows and <laughs> show all kinds of action reaction but a moment later he may be smiling doesn't matter he is not actually getting angry he is just showing that individual in front oh i am angry see <laughs> but it is not reacting there is no reaction there so anger is just a show have you seen birds which have very beautiful plumage they'll do like this like this with their wings huh the feathers they will spread so this person is also like that but he is not in, involved in an action he is not putting out his desires in the marketplace that is what happens so and he is called stable of mind he is free from passion fear and anger fear is another important word he is not fearful okay so we have come to the end of verse 56 so we will stop over here